So yeah, uh, we will start our session. So we have some more um, cases to discuss in uh, dynamic arrays. So so uh, there is one more case to discuss in here. So let me take a another dynamic array, say d y n two, and uh, I have taken a second dynamic array. So this is my first dynamic array, which has the value of zero four three two one, and uh, let me again add some more values to this dynamic array. So after one time unit. My d y n one is equal to one three two one two one two three four five six seven eight nine. So this is my updated dynamic array. And uh, so after one time unit, what I will do here, I have just declared my dynamic array, but I am not allocating any size to this dynamic array d y n two. So here, what I will do, d y n two will be equal to new of sorry, I'll just allocate d y n two is equal to d y n one, and I will display my dynamic array two. So dollar display the value of d y n two is percentage p. Comma d y n two. So let's see what is our output here. I'm not allocating the size to this d y n two. Just I'm copying d y n two is equal to d y n one. So let's see what we are getting. Compile selected. Yeah. Let me simulate it. Yeah. Here we can see the memory for d y n two is also being created. So here we can see the memory for d y n two has been created, and the elements of d y n one are copied to this d y n two, and we are getting this output. So I have, I have not uh, created any memory for d y n two separately. I have just copied d y n two is equal to d y n one. And if I want uh, to add two more Locations extra in D Y N two, then I can simply add by retaining the old values. Then I can simply add D Y N two is equal to new of two of D Y N one. So let me display it again. Let me display the value of the new value. Of d y n two is percentage p comma d y n two. Let us see what we are getting here. So let me end the simulation first, and let me compile it. Start simulation, and uh, we have another function called size. It will return the size of the dynamic array. So we can. I will declare. Another variable called size underscore out, size underscore out, and I will declare it. So size underscore out will be equal to d y n two dot size. So basically, this function will return the size of the dynamic array. So I will display the size of the dynamic array. Size of d y n two is percentage d. Comma size underscore out display this in the simulation and recompile it again. So here I can see the size of the dynamic array is nine. So this is all about uh, the dynamic arrays in system video. So coming to queues in uh, system verlog so queues in system verlog are not uh, are represented so the syntax for queue in system verlog is data type let me take it 
so the syntax for q in the system will log is data type followed by followed by name of the array let's say a followed by dollar symbol so this is the syntax for q in a system log so if we want to declare a q of logic type logic a is the name of the q followed by dollar symbol so this is a q so a is a q so what happens here if we declare a q say logic a of dollar then we no need to <coughs> excuse me so we no need to declare any size of the q no need to declare the size of the q so what happens here when we declare a q say a then some number of memory locations will be created for this a and when we allocate a is equal to say 1 2 3 then automatically the size then automatically three locations will be created like this and 1 2 3 will be stored and if you want to insert one more element into this queue then one more location will be created for this queue and if we want to insert any element say 4 then 4 will be stored in this queue so this is about queue so there is no need to declare any size of the queue like uh, date uh, like uh, dynamic arrays or fixed size arrays so queues are very flexible and there is no need to declare the size and the syntax or the syntax to find it is a queue or not is dollar symbol so this is how a queue is represented so let's see some of the methods uh, which uh, which are involved in this queue so built in functions wait a minute so let's see some of the built in functions which are involved in this queue so for inserting an element into the queue so for inserting element into the queue there is a built in function called insert for example let us declare a queue say int q1 of dollar and q1 is equal to 2 3 4 so they are basically three locations and three elements are being stored in this queue and if we want to insert one more element say 5 into this queue so we will use the keyword insert q1 dot insert and we have an option called way to insert q so there will be two arguments in in this insert function built-in function so the first argument is index and the second argument is value so index i want to insert this phi in uh, this is 0th position 1 2 and I want to insert it in third position wait a minute so I want to insert this uh, uh, phi into third position so I will write 3 comma phi so the element phi will be inserted in third position so the queue will automatically grow so now the updated queue will be equal to 2 3 4 and 5 and similarly i have also delete function so for deleting any element from the queue here in this example i want to delete uh, Five from this queue so I want to delete 5 from this queue then I, I have a delete function so I will write a 
one dot delete i want to delete five so i will simply write q1 dot delete five so the updated q will be equal to 2 3 4 here in this case the queue is automatically shrinking itself so the queue can automatically grow and shrink and i have one more function called push underscore front so so using this function i can push an element into front position of this queue for example i want to push Number seven into the queue, which is our two three four queue. So here we have our queue, say two three four, and I want to push number five to the first first position. Then I will use this push underscore front built-in function. I will use q one dot push underscore front of five. Then my queue will be equal to five two three. and i can also push the element at the end of the queue by using the function push underscore back example q1 dot push underscore back 7 then the then our queue will automatically grow then the queue will be equal to 5 2 3 4 and 7 will be inserted at the last position so this is a push underscore front and push underscore back and if i want to remove the front element first element from the queue then i have a function called pop underscore front so this will basically remove the uh, element from the queue here pop underscore front will remove the first element so i will use q1 dot pop underscore print of so this pop underscore print will remove the first element so our q will be equal to 2 3 4 here the q is automatically shrinking and if i again use this pop underscore print function then q dot q1 dot pop underscore front then my updated queue will be equal to 3 comma 4 similarly i have also have pop underscore back i have also have this function pop underscore back so this function will remove the last element from the back that is it will remove in this case it will remove 4 and in this case it will remove 4 so if we use this operation on this queue then the resultant will be only 3 so these are some built in functions in our queue so is this clear for everyone if you are having any doubt you can ask me and we can we have also another function called push underscore back wait a minute So using this uh, push underscore back function, we can push the elements into the queue from the back. So if we have a queue, say one, two, four, then if we use uh, function q one dot push underscore back, say five, then five will be inserted from the back of the queue. One, two, four, and five. so see uh, these are the these are some of the built in functions in queues so if you are having any doubts you can ask me